In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, multiplying powers a little bit. So sort of, uh, or essentially, the idea of if you have uh, a number with a variable, and then you have another number with a variable, that number being a coefficient, of course, they both have exponents. You want to multiply them together, you know, kind of, what do you do? What does that mean? So the easiest way to remember, at least in my head, the easiest way to remember what to do is just to think a little bit about the order of operations. So I'm going to make a little order of operations pyramid here, hopefully very quickly. So that at the top, of course, would be parentheses. Anything in parentheses has to come first. Uh, from there, I would do anything with an exponent on it. So that has some play here, but not a ton. Um, we're going to deal with multiplying and dividing next. Now remember, neither divide nor multiply is greater than the other, but they're better than the one on the bottom, which is add and subtract. This is sort of the uh, hierarchy of uh, order of operations. Multiply and divide, doesn't matter what order they come in, just do them left to right. Add and subtract, doesn't matter, just as long as it's left to right. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, if we're given a problem like 4x to the third power times 2x squared, it's sort of helpful to think about it this way. This is the kind of stuff we're dealing with. I'm going to multiply the coefficients. So multiply is my uh, original operation, so 4 times 2. Now, I like to think of the exponents sort of like the little brothers. It's, and the little brothers get the hand-me-down. And in this case, that means they sort of get the operational hand-me-down operation. So if I multiply the coefficients, I just add my numbers, because that's the uh, sort of the little brother leftover uh, secondhand uh, operation. So I keep my x here, and I do 3 plus 2, which is, of course, 5. So I just say x to the fifth power. So if you can remember, multiply the numbers, do one less to the um, exponents, you'll be in good shape. So let's do a few of them and move on from there. So start here. My hands are super dry, so it's for some reason very difficult to move pieces of paper. Um, now, in this one, it says x to the fifth times x to the eighth. Well, the little dot, of course, means times. If there were numbers here, they would be one and one, so what's the point? So I'm going to do something with the x's. And remember, if I multiply the numbers, I add the exponents. So I just do sort of a x to the 5 plus 8. And obviously, you don't need to write that step down at any time, although I realize now that in orange, it's difficult to see. Orange plus my terrible handwriting, I should say. x equals 5 plus 8, or x equals, or x to the 13th power, I'm sorry. So there you go, x to the 13th. And the next one, similar problem type there. Uh, what we're dealing with uh, more in this case would be that we have actual coefficients that aren't 1. I just do what I'm told as far as these are concerned. 4 times 7 is 28. And from here, multiply the numbers, add the exponents, 4 plus 3, x to the seventh power. So that's all you have to do on that type. I've got uh, three more that sort of go a little bit deeper. Now we're going to start talking about the idea of well, what ha happens if you have a negative exponent. Nothing really, I mean nothing shocking or anything. Uh, still 1 times 1 and then it'll end up with negative 4 almost like this. Negative 4 plus 9. This step really doesn't exist by the way. Um, anyway 9 minus 4 is, of course, 5, so you get x to the positive 5 power. In the next set, same type of thing. 4 times 3 is, of course, 12. Negative 4, or 4 times 3, yeah. Four, <laughs> negative 4 plus negative 8, so it's sort of this thing. Which is really 12x to the negative 12. And then in most cases, um, they don't want you to keep that negative exponent. They want you to move it. They'll say, you know, no negative exponents. The 12 is good. I mean, it would stay. Now, remember, if you have a negative exponent, you need to put it on the, uh, make it into a fraction, put it in the denominator, or if it's already in the denominator, put it in the numerator. Flip it over the fraction, however it goes. Um, but 12 is not raised to anything that's negative, so it can stay on top. In a sense, it's 12 to the first power now. And then um, x to the 12th. So that's my answer. You can do this one if they're okay with it. Most of the time, the problem is going to want to see it in that form, just because that's what you see most of the time. They want to have positive exponents. And the last one, same thing here, just multiply the numbers. Negative 3 times negative 9, which this and this would make positive 27, uh, times 2, which is 54. So I'm going to deal with 
54. The real issue here is that you have variable A and variable B. Now those are not like terms, so that we don't combine them in any way. We don't find out what the exponents on all the variables and then put them all together, write all the variables and write that number. You just want to make some statement about uh, what the A's are doing, for instance. So this is A to the first power. So I multiply the numbers, I'd add the exponents, so I do 1 plus 3. So a to the fourth, and then b, there's no other b variable there, so you'll just put b to the fifth power. So that's it. It's not a big deal. Just remember the little order of operations pyramid in your head. Sort of go down one step. Incidentally enough, division, uh, its little brother step or little sister step, whatever, is uh, subtraction. So that kind of relationship is always in play as well. So hopefully this uh, can get you somewhere. If you can remember it, uh, it's pretty simple to get those answers correct.